now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Hello and welcome to the All In Podcast. It's just going to be an episode with me and Kevin. Uh, we are both in different locations, if you might have noticed. I am on my mom's couch at her place, and then Kevin is in... I'm in Vegas. Vegas, that's right, that's right. Um, how you doing, man? How's how's life? Uh, I'm doing well. Vegas is like over 100 degrees every day. 110 is the high, uh, so that's been kind of hard. But other than that, life has been fine. I've been pretty happy. Nice, dang. Yeah, uh, last time I was in Vegas, it was very, very hot as well. That was yeah. about a year ago. I, I do not know how you live here. It's just so dry and hot. But I mean, there's some cool stuff for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely some cool stuff. You know what was also some cool stuff was uh, this weekend we had a lot of League of Legends games. We had four series. A lot of them went, um, you know, at least four games. So um, yeah, only one 3 0 stomp, if you remember. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be talking about those games. Uh, let's just go down the road, right? Let's just talk about the first uh, series that happened Dignitas versus TSM. Spoiler alert, TSM did lose. This was their last series probably ever in the LCS. Probably. Unless they come back 20 years from now or something. I don't know. Uh, so, um, Yeah, the world yeah. champs from the LPL, they come back to take over NA. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like, uh, the one thing eluding TSM will be an NA trophy in the future. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, um, it was a very close series. I think, actually, I was surprised to see how many people thought that TSM was going to win on the analyst desk and from the dive and the people. Um, you also thought TSM was going to win too. I guess mm -hmm. maybe it's because um, Dignitas was looking so inconsistent towards the end of the season. Uh, so was TSM. And then they end up in the series, still a pretty messy series back and forth. Um, but Digni or TSM did lose. Dignitas won. What were your overall thoughts on the series? My overall thoughts on the series are Jensen is inevitable. Jensen Centaurin, they... Quite decent. I think more so Jensen than not. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that Rich would play worse because I know Hunter is the weaker point on TSM, but I thought that Rich would be the uh, wouldn't make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And I thought that Insanity had some overreaches, which you know happens when you're trying to carry. But yep. I do think he showed his class. I mean, like if anything, Insanity showed his class, and I thought Boogie and Chime had off games or off series relative to what I expected from them. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty fair assessment. Um, I definitely think Insanity played one hell of a series, honestly, for the situation he was in. Like, mm. damn, it was... I felt like his teammates were such varying degrees of consistency. Like, in the games that they won, I did feel like TSM was looking pretty darn good. Uh, especially that, like, you know, Insanity on Ari, just going 12-1. and one, That felt like a TSM that was... I don't know, they they were playing well as a team, and then... Yeah, it was just the team play really just seemed to fall apart really harshly in the games that they lost. Um, mm. Yeah, I did like what Insanity did. I actually thought Haunter um, was pretty serviceable, pretty fine. I think unexpectedly or maybe expectedly, he is not as bad as the regular season at all. He did show up kind of in playoffs, which was a big surprise. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, Dignitas might have even won in four games if they didn't do the weird LeBlanc top thing. Like... I think maybe when like Summit tried it in the regular season, it was fine because Snagshiv hadn't received a nerf. But mm -hmm. it has. I don't think it's worth it anymore. It did seem like it didn't really do anything in that game. I mean, he got some kills and he got ahead, but like, does that really matter? Is it enough? Wasn't enough, right? TSM won against the the Soul. So um, yeah, I mean, interesting series so far. It was fun. Um, and Dignitas lives on, right? So I guess. Um, <laughs> We'll just, uh, should we talk about the future of Dignitas in their next series right now, or should we just go through all the games, do you think? Let's go through the games and we'll talk about the next series, as is how okay. I prefer it. Alright, let's do that then. Um, so yeah, that was that. TSM's gone. Any quick final thoughts of TSM leaving? <laughs> Honestly, we all, I think, thought TSM would be like 8th to 10th. And like, yeah, okay, they were like 6th or 7th or whatever it was. But they showed they showed a hell of a fight for how weak that roster looked like on paper. Like yeah. I have a renewed respect for Boogie. I think he's much better than I expected before the season. Chime is pretty good as well. He showed he was legit. Turtle had a good split. I don't care that he had bad games, but generally when you're on a bad team, it's so hard to look good as AD carry. I would say 
the tier list is like eighty carries is the worst, and then it's probably jungle is the worst. And if you have a bad team, you just it's yeah. so hard to do well. Um, and then at the end of the day, I left Insanity for last because like this guy, I just I'm so happy for him. I think he's yeah. going to get a good team. He's going to be at least on a mid tier team. Uh, I will say, as a very quick precaution, there are very there are stories of like Man Cloud's not a good example, but there are stories of like a really good player on a really bad team, like Lyra from Envy, right? Mm-hmm. When he got MVP on a 10th place team, the second he joined a better squad, he just looked like bad. He looked bad. Because yep. when mm-hmm. all the resources are put on you and everyone's playing for you, you can be a superstar. But when you're actually in a team with like actual skill on it and you need to actually pull your weight, that's some people don't do well in that. Like Vethio from uh, yeah. EU. So yeah. that's all I've got to say about TSM. I'm happy they did not ha- leave and on like a really shit note. Because... That'd be such a disgrace to the legacy, even though they've done a lot of eh things. Yeah, definitely. And I think for the legacy of TSM players, uh, Hanser and Wild Turtle, it was honestly cool and great to see them do well for at least little moments here in the playoffs. Um, I mean, it's honestly nice, I think, for Hanser to just like stop the memes, for, I guess, for himself and also fans of his legacy and like his past teams. It's like, you know what? Playoffs showed around, and he was like dramatically improved like when he started oh, taking things sure. seriously i was like all right okay he's like a real top laner like he's not doing the best but he's doing pretty solid most of the time um mm-hmm. so i'm pretty excited about that wall turtle um i think he had a great yeah regular season but his actual playoff series maybe left a little bit to desired but hey i mean they wouldn't be there without it right um and i agree with your assessment on the other players um I hope insane. I mean, insane. has got to get another team, right? Like he performed better than <laughs> there would be no so many of the mid laners. No one picks him up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see how he does. And I've definitely noticed that thing with the teams, right? And switching, you have to be like a different kind of team player sometimes instead of mm-hmm. the one v nine carry. But yeah, all right, let's move forward. Let's move past that. Um, the next series. Do you remember what series this was? Was this? Uh, mm, we can skip this one, right? Barely really even matter, right? Nothing happened in the series. No, I'm just kidding. Nothing of no. Team Liquid versus 100 Thieves, just, uh, you know, the usual. Double F versus Quarter J, battling for their lives in uh, the lower bracket. (laughs) Uh, What were your thoughts on this series, man? It went pretty well for Team Liquid, I think. I think it went pretty well for Team Liquid. Summit showed some hilarious games, to be honest. Uh, Like, he was literally just, like, power dying and Liquid was in their element. They were just, oh, yeah, we'll we'll take that to the bank. Uh, He had, I think, a very good... Fiora, was it Fiora? Yeah, Fiora game, mm. where he was just like putting on a lot of pressure, and they've tried it before, some Fiora abusing Hullbreaker, right? Yep. It was pretty good. Altogether, what I was happy about was that they were able to find ways to use APA without forcing them into some like weird picks that are meta. They, he basically just picked Comfort. He picked yep. Cassie, he picked Nika, which he's been good on, and then he picked Trist, right? So mm. that's what I want to see from them, because he does not need to be a hyper carry he does not be need to be a meta slave and that's when they're gonna get success liquid looked a lot better they looked solid however it was against one of the worst teams in the league (laughs) that just sits there right like yep (laughs) i think worse than tsm worse than digging toss by far if they had to face like we were spared from other best of facts that's all i'm saying liquid basically just got to play out and never got challenged because like their weakness is their mid game right and their ability to keep their lead how the hell is this 100 thieves gonna do anything and actually liquid didn't even have huge leads because they were like we're not going to take any risks. We know we will win. We yeah. know we're better. So they didn't even like do the characteristic TL early game dives, which is a little concerning um, because that is their style. And that is their super strength, right? So if they're, maybe it's just because it's 100 Thieves and it's so predictable, but I, I was like only somewhat reassured by the performance. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, for a lot of the players that want to warm up for the stage, it's a great series, you know, to like not get eliminated in. Because um, after game one, I mean, 100 Thieves kind of looked, like, really defeated. Like, game one was oh, yeah. super close. Uh, like, literally, it was very, very close. Um, I honestly thought 100 Thieves was going to win, and I was kind of hyped for the uh, the comeback story of Doublelift and just about to ride that train. And we live in a world where very much, like, when you think about momentum and how weak all, all 10 of these players' mentals can be in these situations, yeah. anything could have happened. So I honestly think if 100 Thieves, like... I mean, obviously, if they're just a better team, but, like, damn, both of these teams were both, like, on the cusp of, like, just taking control of the momentum, and then they just held it forever. Um, yep. Team Liquid really just held it. Even in the game that um, 
that a team liquid lost i was like it's the only game they lost was in summit was playing a tank he was playing cassante <laughs> they lost oh, all the other ones i mean he just can't i don't know i just thought it was funny right he can't win on tanks i mean he didn't even play that badly but um he has an okay orn but every other tank i just like don't think he knows how to play them and orn is broken so yeah. It's true. Orn is um, the original, like, BS. Is he kind of the original Cassante, right? Your assassin DPS oh, sure. melee mage tank. <laughs> does, does everything, can initiate, can duel, can do yep. percent damage. Wave clear. He used everything. to have even more, but. Oh, they both have CC immunities on the. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cassante uh, just has four <laughs> dashes, right? That's the only difference, really. <laughs> yeah, Same that's champion, true. It's like copying dashes. my homework, but to, to make some changes, right? Yeah. Um, I will okay. say really quickly, though, 100 Thieves, very disappointing. Someday, very disappointing playoffs. I expected more from playoffs. Double have honestly looked good this series for the most part with everything around him, you know, being terrible. And Quinn needs to... I, he actually has pretty good CS per minute numbers, I saw, but... I think he just like can't do all the major things. He needs more time to cook before he can be a, a good player, I think. Yeah. And that that's it. Closer was still getting outclassed by Pioshik. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not a sentence I expected to say um at the start of the summer. Yeah, it's uh unexpected the collapse of Closer. I mean I don't we've talked so much about it that like I don't yeah. even know what else to say about it. It's just like mm -hmm. The, the little mini dream we had that maybe he would just show up magically for playoffs and start popping yeah. off. Yeah, that's, that was that was a pipe dream, right? Um, double lift, I mean, I think he did play well. I just, I did kind of feel like he wasn't super comfortable in the AP Kaisa, maybe as much as you oh, is sure. AP Dude, He Kaisa. went in and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> You're not so, AD. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't have a feel of like the item's strengths and like his build strengths and stuff like that. So, mm. I mean, it's just like a play. It's just a team that's just not ready, right? This team needs this whole entire year to like do anything next year, essentially. So, are they going to keep these players around? I don't know, but definitely Quid and Buzio are probably not quite ready for the LCS stage. Maybe they can be by next year. I think Closer really needs to take a look at his life and what he wants. <laughs> Does he want to be a pro anymore? It looks like he has completely lost all faith in like life in the game. Like it's hard to see a guy who is just so talented for like mm -hmm. a couple of years straight to just instantly drop down in stock, like really, really hard. Like these kind of dropbacks, I mean, they usually like speak of something else is going on in their life. It's more than just the game. It's more than just who their teammates are, what the meta is, blah, blah, blah. It's like something's usually yeah. going on with them weird. Like so, personal issues or something like that. Because like even everything he was good at stereotypically was like very half-hearted at best. Yeah. It happened once at a blue moon, honestly, towards the end of the split, like his Viego games, you know, he had one. And he had a couple of Viego and Lee Sin games throughout the split that just only one of them hit. So... I hope he that he doubled his good games in playoffs by having two good games. Yeah, pretty split. much. <laughs> pretty much. I hope he figures it out. I don't want to see him gone. I'm still willing to give him more chances oh, as a for fan. Sure. It's so, one split, guys. Yeah. He was an MVP candidate over and over. Yep, yep. So I, I hope that we don't bully him too hard off the internet. We are harsh on him because he, we want greatness from him but mm -hmm. now that he's finally out now that he's gone we're not going to be talking about it anymore i just want to see him again next year do better um same for yeah. someday right i think a lot of the same goes for someday too where you know i don't know you're a great player man it's just like you you're just being held back by something and you can't show it everyone has everyone can every great can have like one or two off splits i'm okay with yeah. that Yep, same. And I think Double F, did you hear his interview? Actually, yes, I'm yeah, so excited about that. That was that was interesting where he was saying like he he's definitely at home. He think he wants to compete. I think he's definitely coming back next year if he can find a team that he wants. Um, yeah, I'm I hope they build he either finds a good team or he, they build a good team around him cuz I think that the conditions this year just weren't enough, right? Like they they had to sub in randomly yeah sub and quid right midway through mm -hmm. the year that's like not or midway through the year yeah that's not something you want in a good team yeah like mid laners could company. literally make your team look like bronze or gods <laughs> as we've seen <laughs> yeah. no it's very true same with just mid jungle synergy in general right like mm -hmm. um yeah and then if you want to keep closer right you're gonna have to really take into the fact that you probably need a mid laner who goes around and does whatever closer wants instead of like the other way around because it doesn't seem like yep. closer uh, he, or he has to learn, right? Closer's got to learn. But I think for Doublelift, 
in his speech, it was cool that he was very self-aware about his weaknesses this year, right? He is a known shot caller on his teams. He said many times that he's like a late game shot caller. And like, sometimes he talks about lane stuff too, but like he makes decisions for his team on his past iterations. And it's some of his choices are kind of famous for draft picks and priorities. And some of the calls he's made where I remember specifically, it was five game series against C9. Right. And, uh, or TSM, it was TSM. He was uh, on Team Liquid. It was five games he was against T- uh, TSM. And he realized to get to the first sweep that they had to start first picking Varus for him. And he could beat any uh, Zven on the matchup in any way, as long mm-hmm. as he got Varus first pick. And then they reverse swept TSM, and it was pretty sweet. And uh, He said that in an interview. So I hope he can get that groove back. I hope he can find it. You know, he took a break for two years. I don't think he should be that hard himself. It's really hard uh, to know what the yeah. right call is. But I think he's got it in him to learn it. He has a long history of making clutch plays and clutch calls uh, and some bad ones too. <laughs> but that's it for 100 Thieves. They're gone. Um, let's move to the next series. It was EG versus C9. Weirdly enough, came out exactly how I predicted. Very entertaining, very crazy, but just C9 3 <laughs> 0. Yeah. I, I was surprised how many games, I mean, EG lost. I just. I was just baffled that EG lost some of these games. Uh, what were your thoughts on this series? <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm on the same page with you. Like, I, if you only saw the record, you're like, yeah, as expected, <laughs> C930, right? Yep. But the games, like, brothers, I actually thought C9 looked a little sketch in this. And I was like, I don't. Okay, first of all, we should talk about they subbed in Armeo again. Yep. What the hell's going on? I don't Armeo know. is not someone you should bring in clutch into the playoffs scenario. Maybe Sh- Shaden or whatever his name is wasn't confident and was losing scrims, but like that was such a weird decision at the last minute. I thought Shaden was much better, so I don't know why first game either. Normally wouldn't you just start with Shaden and then if things go wrong right. then you jump to Arm out? Like mm-hmm. it was because like they still have another life. So they still switch from Arm out to Shaden. Didn't you just shatter both of their confidences by doing Absolutely. this? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's it was rough. I mean I <sighs> I struggled to find words to describe this series. It just felt surreal, you know, <laughs> like I yeah. like things are happening and none of it mattered and C9 just won in the end. I was like, I don't think C9 should have won like I don't know, at least two of these games, maybe even three. Like it was just so bad what they were doing and it then EG was winning and just lose. Like it was like the PayPal came in, they checked their phones, they entered the next team fight, game was over. Like, just over. And I was like, what the f-? Yeah. So, game I don't really know what to say. Game 3 was but... a 0.3k goal lead, according to Game of Legends, at least, and it was a 28-minute yeah. game. Like, what What kind of shit... Like, you just look at that without even having watched the game, and you're just like, what kind of shit show happened for this to transpire at 28 minutes? Yeah. It was, dude, like, okay, Berserker was popping off, right? Yeah, he but, was. Like, also, like, in the situations where he was popping off, I was just looking at the enemies, like what are you guys doing? Like, are you guys just walking up to him <laughs> and letting him smurf on you? <laughs> and you're letting it happen over and over again. It's like, I don't know, they just got sleepy in their third game. And, like, Cloud9 was just waking up. Like, they were like, oh, okay, we're in game three. Of our, okay, we'll just we'll just also start monkeying around, but we will never actually lose. It was like, I, I have a very weird anecdote. So I play with my friend who's... um much much like lower level like he he's like level 30 something now but he's very oh, very huh. green to the game very new i play i have a different account i'm level like 15 on it we play against mostly like non-level 30 accounts or like some iron accounts bronze accounts it feels like that game where i am just kind of messing around not letting the game end so we can like learn the game and stuff and then when he's like let's end the game i just go in the game like it's like big brother and little brother he's just chilling being like okay have your fun you're getting some good hits in all right I'm done. You're not actually going to win this game, right? And then they end the game. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great analogy. And then what I would tack on to that is like, but the concerning part would be like, you know how you watch a big brother versus a little brother usually, right? And like, he's like, oh, he's got his hand on the guy's forehead, the little brother's forehead. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, you can't hit me, whatever. You're just like messing around. Yep. The problem with this series is Cloud9 is the big brother. I agree. But they were getting socked. Like the yeah, kid, the kid was actually landing good hits, and you're like, wait, what? Why is the big brother getting hit, the shit knocked out of him? Like he won in the end when he got serious, but like the kid should never land those hits. Like yeah. where is he getting these hits? And so I thought Cloud Nine came out looking like, oh no, our first seed, our potential first seed, right, isn't looking that good. That's really bad. 
Yeah. 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 I mean, but maybe it's just EG was good and they're just a shit show, right? Like, honestly, it's hard yeah. to say because, you know, we, we'll talk about it later, but there's, there's another team that also has this issue. Right. There's, it's just been a weird weekend, I think. Um, you know, just, it's just confusing feelings. Um, last thing I want to say about C9 before we move on, because we will talk about them again, is I wanted, <laughs> I had this conversation with League Dad and it was pretty funny. We were cracking up after. Um, I was telling him about uh, LPL and telling him about uh-huh. some series that's happening and how like EDG was the AC. seed. They had Uzi trying to make a miracle run, right, to like into playoffs. They won a couple. And then I was like to League Dad, so EDG is LPL's eighth seed. And there's a lot of teams that I would say are better than them. Maybe they could be seventh oh, power. Sure. Would they Technically, be... they got fifth place, but yeah, they, they are like quite good. Yeah, uh, There are a lot good. of teams quite that could be quite better than them, even the, despite their ranking. Yeah, exactly, right? And then there's um like, you know, a bunch of teams in that middle to lower pack for LPL that I don't yeah. think like our first seed Cloud9 could even be in a best of 5. Like w- do, you do you think that MNS could be rookie, the 6th place team or whatever top esports? Yep, or 8th place seed Fofo. I mean, EDG Fofo is fucking boosted, but do you think MNS is just going to gap him, right? No, he's not. It's not like we're going to get gap people in the top lane or the, you know, because Ale is still pretty good. Uzi's pretty good. Mako's pretty oh, good. Are we be gapping Ale anybody? would put Fudge in the dumpster, dude. That guy, he's not just pretty good. That guy's legit. He's, yeah. he's kind of evil out. I mean, it's LPL, A seed, C9 first seed. It's There's such a huge gap in the regions that it's kind of insane like how far down you can go in the LPL standings and still look at a team and be like, I don't know if cloud nine beats that, you know, mm-hmm. I don't really know. So, um, that was a bit I, depressing. I will add but... though, that like to our credit though, it's not like LCK is that much like other than KT, like everyone else other than KT, honestly, EDG probably has a good chance against. So it's not like any so far apart. Like it, <laughs> we literally saw BLG shit stop, right? Like yeah. all of all of the best current teams when they weren't falling apart, and BLG is not even the second seed. Yeah, <laughs> they're, sure. they're the third now, or potentially, right? They we don't know. Yeah. Uh, like I think LNG and JDG probably could stop the Korean teams as well. So like honestly, it's not like it's just their fault. You know, it's 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 a this season in this meta before Worlds, LPL looks crazy. Yep. And I think NA, we've, I think we're slowly starting to accept as a community. I don't know if you feel this. I've been reading a lot of Red Threads, and I think I've slowly seen more and more pushback when people are like, oh, the Koreans or the, the Chinese players are so good. Like, they're, they're like, dude, who, the, who cares? We're just here yeah. to watch entertaining league. And I have actually been seeing more pushback. They're like, these people think they're so, okay, I also watch LPL and LCK, but like people who are only Doom posts about how good the other regions are, like, they just feel like they're superior because they watch a better region, but that's not the case, right? So, yeah. That's all. I just had a, a mini rant to throw in there. <laughs> oh, no, I like that. I like that. I'm a bit of a doomer, right? So it's good to have a little positive take on my situation I'm trying to bring to light. So, I mean, yeah, it doesn't really matter. NA could always be like this. We'll still be entertaining. We'll still watch it. Um, yeah. I also just think, though, right, like, we can do better as NA. And that's what I want. And I think that, you know there's a lot of things holding us back that don't need to hold us back. And, you know, that's a lot of the uh, reasons why our players did a walkout earlier this year. And there's so much uh, controversy. So anyways, uh, LPL is crazy. About... Go watch yeah. those games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you know, cloud nine, I hope they step it up. I hope they really proved this year. They're a first seed. And I hope they just do something interesting because they've been together for a while. The entire broadcast, the entire LCS, like I want to give this take to you as well. How do you feel about like, cloud nine fatigue the dive talked about it there's been some reddit threads it's kind of being just shoved into the lcs narrative if you ever watch the actual broadcast and the, yep. and the cast and stuff do you think they should do it like this it was kind of like tl when they went on four years in a row right or two years in a row it was kind of like yeah that uh, four a, splits in a row right? yeah four splits in a row so yeah so how i feel about it i think the difference is like when tl was doing well they like had, had a msf finals they had Mm. three threes against like dom one game and ig or g2 or whatever they have like a lot of like good wins like if you really think back to them that's like na almost was competitive with yep. some of the best teams in the world that's, that's actually true. crazy now that we look back right yep so in i think the fatigue was actually not as bad back then i agree there is c9 fatigue but it, i think some of it just comes from we don't have until like ggs this year we didn't have a second place popular team to mm. root for that like had any chance in hell right 
CLG was sh- almost shit until their last split. TSM's not even talkable. TL wasn't talkable. Who else was there? Hundred Thieves was also dying. Like, well, except they almost they got third seed, but um, they they shit they got shit on playoffs. Right, so like nobody was good. Mm. So I don't think it's C9's fault. I think that the broadcast is doing their best, and I think they're actually every time they brought C9 on, it's been great. But the sure. problem is they just like need other great. Like they need another Zen to bring on another team to cast or whatever, right? Because mm-hmm. all the C9 segments were fire, and like, they probably got good reviews. But then they were like. Let's do that again. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you need to space these out or else we're going to get sick of it. Even though I like Sven, like Sven interviewing NRG, which we're about to talk about after mm-hmm. they win and NRG is going to play against C9 was odd to me. I was like, ah. he's like, we're about move. to play you. How do you guys feel? And like, I'm that, like was a, ah. that was a choice that the broadcast decided <laughs> to make. <laughs> that was a choice of all time. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Great takes. Yeah. I, uh, it's not C9's fault, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. And I think people have been a little slow to pick up the GGS energy hype, even though they always are talked about as underhyped. But really, what all this has been is me been avoiding the main topic of conversation. Yes, that is Golden Guardians got absolutely blasted by energy. I didn't want to talk about it, but here we are. Energy 3-1 Golden Guardians. Um, it was very one-sided, I feel like. Golden Guardians completely pooped the bed. And I still think they're a good team, but Energy, holy cow, just seemed to like play just good, solid League of Legends, and it was like way enough. It was just so easy for them. <laughs> so, what do you feel about this series? It, it was way enough. It was so easy. It was such a good way to describe what it was. So, we said last podcast, at least I said, 3 2. I think NRG has a lot of similar traits to Golden Guardians. They're just a little less good, right? Like uh, yeah. across the board. Yeah. Um, I still kind of believe that, but I think the energy showed up. They came in, they knew exactly what they were going to do. They were very, uh, I think Palfox popped off, first of all. I think Palfox is Xeer. Incredible. I haven't mm-hmm. seen an NA born Xeer do that much hard carry in a long ass time. Maybe ever. Like maybe Pope Elder was the last time, right? No. Um, I think that GGS was like, uncharacteristically bad, though, as oh, well. Yeah. I think they came into the NRG series and did not ex- expect NRG to come out swinging. I don't think they expected um, any of the firepower coming out of it. And it was odd to me was that I don't think Dokla, like, was even, like, doing that much throughout this. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, like, I say this because Dokla is very hit or miss to me. And yep. when he hits, NRG looks very good. But mm-hmm. NRG stopped without Dokla hitting, which is so strange to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Laker should have played, like, Gigabat either. I think River played a little bit uncharacteristically. I think Contracts was just in his, in his head. I think yep. Contracts was in, his, like, those games where he's just in your jungle smurfing his ass off. And I do not know what they fed that boy. Um... Otherwise, yeah, I'm very proud of NRG. This is, like, so sick. I think that if we had um, the old, like, 200, 300k viewership days, everyone would be hyped out of their mind right now. Dude, people would is, be going nuts. I, I'm hyped out of my, my, my mind. I was watching. I was like, this is unreal. Like, yep. the, the comebacks they were pulling off when they were, like, uh, Golden Guardians 7k ahead in, like, game two or whatever it was. Mm. I'm like, what the hell is going on? How did yep. you lose that game? And then once they lost the game, like, it's over. I don't care. It's so over. NRG, I care, but, like, I think NRG's just been stopped. Yeah, I... Yeah. 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 Feelings. <laughs> I really thought Golden Guardians was going to win this. Uh, I think a lot of people did, and I'm surprised it went the other way. I think Golden Guardians played so bad. Oh, my God. I thought Gory was probably their most consistent best player, but even he was still kind of making a lot of weird choices being bad. He and I think... Solo killed, didn't he? He did, yeah. I don't yeah, think okay. he didn't play very well. <laughs> he was well. the best, I agree. But I was yeah. like, yeah, so he, he my got, It was rough for him, bro. Like, I remember Gordy, like, okay, I'm going to just, here's the cope, and I also think it's pretty accurate, too. But Golden Guardians look like they completely disrespected energy in so many of their plays. Like, they're going in, like, 1v2, 1v3. Like, maybe they have a teammate coming up behind them, right? But, like, they have a teammate coming up behind them, and they're going into three people that are already grouped. Right there. Like, the amount of times I saw something like that, it was so often, and I thought, this has to be massive disrespect, right? What are these, right? like, plays? Like, if you're playing normally in solo queue, you don't even do that. So, there's some weird calls. I think the main culprit, which I have to say, is Huhi. I think he was the biggest problem, and he was their worst player. That guy was 
inting mm-hmm. out of his mind, bro. Like, he was in there, like, for an engage, making a play, like, 30 seconds after it was over, or, like, 20 seconds before his team was there. There was no in-between. I mean, sometimes they did work out in a weird way, where, like, his, his play looks super awkward. It kind of works out for Golden Guardians. And then... It's kind of net neutral because then energy comes in and cleans up. But then the macro of it all is energy just comes out ahead. They get something else also. Um, mm-hmm. So I really think actually it was Huhi getting kind of gapped by something I said in a previous podcast is Ignar is not doing anything spectacular. He's just not doing as bad as you are. Like I felt like the <laughs> same way that hit against Core JJ was he was just chilling. Ignar was just good. He makes some good plays. He makes some bad plays. They just don't end up that badly. The enemy. So support... you're telling me Ignar was the consistent player amongst Core JJ and Huhi? Yeah, I believe you. But that's 100%. such a strange comment. <laughs> it's hundred percent, dude. I really yeah, am no, just watching right. these games with like a microscope, trying to figure out like what's going on. It's just Ignar is just playing normally. I swear to God, the guy is just being like, I'm gonna be the just chill i'm gonna go for some engage i might die here whatever but it's mostly positive okay not bad all right, i made a bad engage all right i gotta flash out waste my flash and then you have who over here i'm flashing in i'm ulting oh i'm dead oh i baited my entire team okay we actually just <laughs> went zero for three and lost a dragon like it's so dramatic and when different. you mention it this way you know what this reminds me of this <laughs> reminds me of carrio when faker was oh, in here oh yeah you like see actually. all these plays and he's just kick running it. You know, i'm like <laughs> some of them work out right because like he's mechanically good but like sometimes i'm like dude just like chill <laughs> like what are yeah. you doing just chill dude you're a great support and they're both player. like considered the best support in their leagues at times right so yeah uh-huh. mm. yeah i i i don't know what was going on in who he's mind i feel like they were like either lazy and like sleepy or like really stressed for some reason and playing under a lot of pressure either one is not great um they made just so many questionable calls that you would never see them make in the regular season i think river i do think he played poorly but i really feel like he was getting pulled into situations because of who he's plays uh, I think he had a hostage snare going on. Yeah, like who he had a, a gun bit. to his head. He's like, "You better go here." I was like, "We're going no, in, right?" I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the dive brought up a really. I think it was the dive brought up mm. a really good theory, which was mm. game one. They disrespected them. They were like, "Yeah, we stop them all the time in scrims, whatever. We stopped them in the regular season. We're going to win this easy." Actually, yeah. I don't think they necessarily stopped them in the regular season. Either way, I think they thought they were going to win easily. They weren't super prepared, so they like screwed around right and then they found out and they're like oh and then in game two they had a lead i believe and then they threw it and they're like oh god and so they were even though they won game three like you could tell they were shaky even though they're a better team so i think this is energy plays extremely well but like i think some of it had to be ggs being underperforming like i don't i don't think it's cope i'm not a ggs like super fan but i mean everyone who's watched them knows that they're very good yeah yeah i i also think energy did play well but like i also think they they weren't even they didn't have to play that well is i guess what i'm trying to say i think energy still could have played better a lot better in this series but they got so much stuff spoon fed to them that energy didn't even need to show like i'm not even confident when we do eventually talk about cloud nine versus energy i'm not confident that cloud nine is going to win because if i just look at what has happened in playoffs the last series against cloud nine was not convincing when they beat EG. And this series for energy, I felt like energy could have done even more. I felt like they were pushed more in their Team Liquid series, if I'm being honest. Um, so yeah. it was weird. Yeah, <laughs> I, it was weird watching the series, um, thinking that energy could play better, but also knowing GGS could play way better and not really getting a full picture of these teams. One series, right? That's why they have two lives. Um, I think for uh, just, I don't know. I think. For draft, too, I got to talk about draft. I feel like Golden Guardians had very disrespectful drafts, too, that, like, um, the game won, right? I think they really got planned against. Like, the Trundle into Sejuani counter, that's a very common counter. That's yep. known, right? You take the phase rush, but it's not just the Trundle counter. It's the how you play with Trundle and how you play Sejuani. River is so used to face checking every single bush as Sejuani and with his team right mm. behind him. And Energy had the most insane comp at if you go into us, we will just annihilate one shot a single person. And it kept happening over and over again. Uh, River or who he would face check or get close to an area, boom, Trundle and the whole team are there jumping on you and you're one shot, right? But 
Energy was also playing it smart, where they weren't just diving in, over committing with fights. Because you know what? They can't do that. They have Trundle, they have Maokai, they have like Kasante, right? Very mid rangey engage, where the enemy team, you know, they got uh, Nautilus and Sejuani and, and Rumble, so they can actually start fights from far away and jump onto you. But they were just like waiting for them to jump onto them in opportune moments. And then it just kept going, right? You go into game two, the draft is also very interesting. Renekton Nidalee into a Giga Poke Comp. And Energy was able to come back with a huge flank, uh, TP flank that um, got them five kills at a Baron, right? But Golden Guardians was just getting sniped and hit by all the poke. Contract is actually a sniper with the spears and he kept throwing spears through walls they couldn't react in time it was a big hands diff but also energy like chess moved them they like countered them with like very specific comp ideas and strategies uh and golden guardians was just not prepared at all for these like big ass chess moves so i'm really excited for energy and i might even be predicting them for the next series we'll see when we get there but that was Essentially, all the series that happens this weekend, um, pretty hype stuff. Do you have anything to say before we talk about next week? Or yeah, uh, games? if I'm going to go to my cope route, I'm so glad Energy looks so good against GGS because that means that Team Liquid ain't trash. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so down. And the other thing is, I think maybe Golden Guardians is just taking one for the team. They're going to be our fourth seed to go against EU and completely shit stop EU. Oh, yes, please. Give me the GGS. Like, how else can you explain the play? Like, I really am, I'm trying to piece it together. Yeah, I hope they <laughs> annihilate uh, Mad Lions for us, you know? <laughs> Just take a free one for us, please. Um, um, yeah. We can no. set anyone against Mad Lions. So. Yeah, I, I, I want Golden Guardians to still do well, but honestly, if I had to choose between GGS and Energy, I really like both options. I just didn't think Energy was an option, you know? I didn't think yeah. I was going to be okay with rooting for them, but I'm very okay. Like, the fact that they definitely have more to show, I mean, it means they're going for the trophy, right? That means they've planned to go for the trophy, so I'm excited for that. All right, let's talk about next series, though. Um, let's back it up. Let's talk about Evil Geniuses versus Team Liquid. Why don't you talk about these teams and give your prediction, and then I will go. <laughs> yeah, so Evil Geniuses' biggest strength is their mid laner, and yep. right now TL's most shaky part is not their top laner, it's their mid laner. Um, APA was good against 100 Thieves, but he was not. He was against no pressure. He was against yep. like a farm bot. He was very good at farming, to be honest, but not anything else. Um... I think APA still needs work. There is a world Harry gets subbed back in and he might have a fresh outlook after, you know, untilting for a while. And yep. I, I, I wouldn't even be surprised or that upset. I'd be like, okay, you know, I get it. I think yep. APA just needs more time to cook like a professional champel because it looks like he's a good player. It actually looks like he has the right instincts, but his champel's just like some of it is not ready other than like the Ziggs and at times the Cassie. But you can't, the problem with Cassie, it's not like Ori. You cannot pick it all the time. You have to find yep. your spots. Yeah. Um, and then my feelings for EG is they they would be favored normally, but after watching the energy power level, right, maybe energy is just that good. And also, TL did at least have a, like, over-vitalizing game, while EG, like, they just, like, lost frustrating games. They lost frustrating games, they subbed out their jungler, they probably boomed at least one of their two junglers' mentals, if not both. Yep. So EG just entered. I don't know what they were doing. They should have just stuck with one jungler, even if they lose, like, you were you were supposed to lose against C9. But don't tell yeah. your jungler in playoffs. It's so important. It, playoffs is a whole different thing from regular season. You need yeah. to have that mindset. Yep. So I think TL will win. I think it'll be a 3-1. And I think EG is going to look pathetic. It's not oh. going to be competitive. Damn! Shots but fired. historically, EG always looks good against TL in League of Legends. Even when EG is bad and TL is good. I don't know why. Like yep, this, is a, this is a famous esports rivalry. But like in League of Legends, EG always get, puts up a fight. Yep. Somehow. It's true. Yeah. It's like our Telegon war. Except... That people who don't know StarCraft don't know this. <laughs> yeah, it's um. I mean, they faced off a lot, right? Especially in that era where uh, it was kind of TL always being like right in the cusp of first, second, third place. They would they would be stepping over EG's bodies, but just barely. <laughs> yeah, um, it was always like unusually close for the power level that EG's old rosters have. Yep, it'd be like five game series, but EG's like came in not very strong looking, but it was still close. I actually expect this to be pretty close. I think it's gonna be three two, Team Liquid. Honestly, I I lost a lot of faith in EG, 
Not in that I actually think they're bad. I do think mental is a big problem for both of these teams. It's a problem for every team in the world, really, right? There's only a few no, teams out sure. there that you could say don't really struggle with mental problems, right? I really feel like JDG, they've lost a couple series. They've lost some games. They've had some really bad early games. They do not tilt, right? But that's one team, the best team in the world. Every team really has mental struggles, right? And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think JDG is actually the definition of clutch. They have won yeah. so many game fives. They're like down two one. They just win two more games. They're like, yeah, another Dude, day they in the have office. They have armor. not lost a playoff series all year. Dude, they literally have plot armor that like TL would have in NA or like uh, SKT would have at Worlds oh, yeah. or domestically. Like it just feels like they can't lose that game five, no matter how badly they play up to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, like yeah. there's like. Kanavi just power inting as one of the best junglers in the league. Yeah. And they win. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Sure, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to talk about the series, right, I think neither of these teams have plot armor of any kind. Like, they're both very fallible, very subject to their own mistakes. And it is a hard one for me to evaluate because um, I did like a lot of what EG showed against C9. But, like, to not be able to pull it through, I felt, like, so painful that... It is devastating um, to do that against C9, dude. You don't want to lose 3-0 like that. Like, that is hard. So, I am going TL 3-2. I do think EG, you could convince me that they can maybe take this series. I think it's close. I think that it is that last life. Both teams are going to bring it. I think there's going to be so much freaking kills, dude. I think it's going to be so bloody. And my main reason why I'm voting for Team Liquid is, yeah, just jungle consistency like i don't believe in armal and i don't know what to believe about sheeden so you know i'm just not with it i just can't root for eg even though i do think there's gonna be a massive mid gap harry or apa i don't think they can really light a candle to what jojo's shown in playoffs i just i don't think it's even close i think for top lane right summit and revenge they're both very inconsistent very iffy but i have oh man i like a lot of what Summit did in the Hundred Thieves series, but I and I like what Revenge has kind of shown, but I don't like um, either of their champion pools. Weirdly enough, I I like them for different reasons. I kind of actually like um, uh, Summit's champion pool against Revenge specifically. I feel like he's got like the cannon is just really good for them, uh, even though he kind of it's all the cannon sometimes. But the cannon beats, yeah. you know. Revenge feels like he's a melee bruiser player, and he only excels on the melee bruisers, right? Aatrox mm-hmm. is probably one of his best champions. I do favor Summit with the Ken in there. And then, yeah, Pioshik, I mean, going to be more consistent. The bot lane is iffy. I think the bot lane is iffy for both teams. Um, Ayla has That's not true. really shown up as much in playoffs as I was expecting. Unforgiven has been kind of a disappointment. I think Yeon has been pretty hit and a little miss and core jj has been really hard to read i really oh am not God. sure how to read core jj at all for this playoff so that's pretty much my analysis top to down where it's just hard to read for so many of these players because you know they're just doing a really big mix of showing up not very much and a little bit here and there and having some good moments and being pretty meh um but yeah i, I think i favor tl mostly for most of it it's just, damn, do they throw sometimes, bro? It is hard. I must say, <laughs> I think historically, every time we've agreed on TL, TL has lost a major series. Oh, no. Last, no. Damn. After 2019. After 2019. <laughs> yeah. 2018, 2019, we were always right because it wasn't that hard. <laughs> it wasn't that hard. Yeah, double lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I'm excited that you're on the same page with me, but I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified too because I don't, not really sure about it i do think tl is a better team oh they are they but, are just like God, straight up they have yeah. they have more depth and they do. honestly with how good nrg is maybe tl is just like the fourth best or the third best team and maybe. they just got smashed who knows? who knows we don't know i mean fourth best probably behind golden guardians as well. yep i still think they should not have i mean okay 100 thieves did put up honestly a really good fight in that game one but i was already ready to be like Dude, TL suck, and then okay, they won the thing, and I was just like, okay, I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I don't really know with either of these teams. They're both figuring so much stuff out, substitutions, yep. inconsistent players. But TL, honestly, they gotta take advantage of this situation, right? Clearly, the junglers on EG have no idea what's going on, and I don't even think 
we know what's going on. So that's it for the TL versus EG series. It's going to be crazy, I think. Golden Guardians versus Dignitas is the next series. Um, I don't even want to talk about this. You go first. I don't even... It's I, a 3-0. We know for who. I Come don't on. know. What is it? Dude, the podcast, the podcast literally left Dignitas off of the graphic of the oh like remaining playoff teams. Like I was like, Yikes. I mean, we all know. No one's mentioned him. There's a good reason. It's it's going to be a stomp. It's not going to be close. Golden Guardians is probably match. They're going to like try. This is going to be their revitalization theory. If they drop a game, it's because of cheese or they just like uber throw. But even if they drop a game, it's not going to be a close 3-1. So it's a 3-0. I know. I know. It should be a 3-0. I am so <laughs> like worried, though, that it's not. That they're just going to lose for some reason. Because like, Golden Guardians, <laughs> they do the not... Best. Dude, they go, I mean, neither of these orcs. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's Jensen, Santorin, and Summer. I am afraid of them. I'm afraid of the curses. I am superstitious, mm-hmm. bro. I watch professional League of Legends you, esports. You, you watch know, enough I, professional esports, you do start believing in curses. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm not saying right. I believe, like, I watch this game too much. So, Golden Guardians has never been a good team, minus a couple months. Like literally, in the entire history of their org, they've had yeah. a few months of time where they've been considered good. Dignitas is about the same, bro. Like, it's just, you know, I don't think Golden Garden is a collapse. I am going to believe in them that if they just play like how they played in the regular season, even if Dignitas shows up and plays the best games Dignitas plays, it should be 3-1, 3-0 for Golden Guardians, right? I firmly believe that. I, the mental that uh, Licorice and 6A went on to talk about in the dive last split and just overall their, their level of play... They should have good mental, right? But all it takes is that one moment, that pressure, right? This is your last yeah. series of the year. Back then, a couple months ago on the dive, it was not the last anything, right? Um, so true. anything could happen. Uh, I'm worried. They're literally favored in all five positions. So I'm going to give it to Golden Guardians, 3-0. <laughs> and yeah. I, for some reason, I'm not confident in it. But here we are. So you're the same, right? Is that what you said? Uh, yep, yeah, I said three zero. I didn't name it, but we all know it's three zero. No, I'm just kidding. Three zero is Golden Guardians. <laughs> okay. Don't yeah, I just end on that. Don't explain. Let's just move on. And then sign off. Yeah. <laughs> end the podcast. Yep. Don't be too toxic. Yeah. <laughs> just leave. Uh, see you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, we're still going because there's one more to talk about. It's kind of two yes, and a half. Sir. One and a half. Uh, Cloud Nine versus Energy. This is a big one. I don't even know where to go with this. Both teams are crazy, but it's the energy is the top top dog slayer, massive underdogs. Cloud Nine almost gets loses a bunch of games, but then three O's. Very weird. Who's wins? Who wins? Tell me, Kevin. Who's winning this series? So I'm super excited about energy because once again it's a quite NA focused team. They have a lot of NA talent on it. They're doing well. Just like CLG last season, but this time they have more NA? Is the it's like the same. Is yeah. it the same? Oh, yeah, because it was uh, Puma and Luger. They were um, Australian or whatever. And then now it's FBI is Australian and then Ignore right, is I Korean. Forgot, I keep forgetting yeah. FBI. Because he named himself FBI. It's literally yeah. a federal agent. Anyways, my yeah, point yeah. is, I'm really <laughs> excited for them. They have continued. Like you say, you're superstitious. They have continued to beat the people above them. And they yep. did. it sometimes doesn't even look close. Nope. It looks like they're smurfing. Like uh, enemy team and Cloud9 is like really sketch against a crap ass EG who's literally subbing junglers and tilting them mid series. Yep. I officially predicted in the right now we have a prediction in the Discord with the, mm. for this podcast. Hell yeah. And I'm like two or three points ahead of uh, below first place. I'm oh. very close. Oh. I bet on NRG three two. Hell yeah, man. Let's That's go. crazy. Dude, okay. I, I would rather have them go and just like bomb out, but uh, like have pride that NA like actually sent our best <laughs> that yeah. was actually NA. No, okay, that's not true. I actually think a lot of Cloud9 has been around long enough that they're, they are NA. I, I don't care. Blabber's but I'm NA. just saying, yeah, yeah well, Blabber is for sure, but I'm just saying like, Zen's been here for a long ass time. He's been here since the TSM Zen days. Zen and Mithy were on TSM at some point. My point is, I just want to see this, like, all this NA talent that, like, NRG has, like, some of the best story out there. Like, they just were continue to be doubted. They are continue to, like, go down to Academy together, for the most part, right? Yeah. Um, for three to four years, and they came back together. And, like, they didn't get good immediately, but they showed they had a class, and they got better as a squad. They found a core that somehow worked. 
And if you told me the contracts core was going to be the one with, I, okay, I think Powell Faker was actually good. We've always thought like he was good, but he just like couldn't be consistent, right? That's NA mid dilemma. Yeah. But Dogo was like basically the fake god of his time. Honestly. Dude, legit bottom tier back in the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so this is incredible, honestly. <laughs> this is the kind of story that like I would be telling people. This is basically the CLG story. So yeah. I want them to go, and I think they can do it. I think so too. But the I, betting sites wise, they're not favored. Okay. Like yeah. <laughs> with rationality in mind, they're not favored. No, they're not. Yeah. I don't I I've decided I am predicting also energy, because I legitimately think that Let's right now go. they're playing better. But if we're being honest, if I were to bet and you were to tell me to put money on it, a lot I don't know if I'd be doing it. I might I might be putting on Cena just because like if I put my rent money, it's on C9, it's like a three one, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I'm I mean it's just it feels like <laughs> It's more likely that C9 wins, right? I am betting on that smallest, smaller percentage that energy is going to play at their best. And C9 is maybe in their slightly weakened state, right? If I think mm-hmm. C9 and energy are both playing at their best, top tier, I still probably think I'd take Cloud9 just because of how insane Blabber and Berserker are. But in the state that I'm watching these teams, assuming Cloud9 plays better than they did against EG, and energy <laughs> plays to the level... I, it's just I still think it's I feel I can I can see energy doing this I can see energy doing this. I honestly thought you were about to say like in the state I've been watching them inebriated <laughs> <laughs> just to continue talking. Inebriated. I mean it's true they are like I mean half the league is drunk man I don't know it feels <laughs> like like on, on the walkout like half the teams just decided to take up a drinking habit and just would switch like which week they were going to be drunk while they play games <laughs> and be like I don't know it's some weird ritual to say f you to the LCS owners I don't know this is a huge conspiracy theory the the point is energy. I think is gonna three one or three two C nine. I I'm gonna go three two. I got it. I'm just gonna go three two. I gotta go three two, right? I think three two yeah. C nine. But like legitimately, if you just take the team that played against EG as like C nine, right? And you take Energy, the one that beat Golden Guardians or even TL. Like I just think Energy is like a better team, like way better. <laughs> like I don't yeah. think it's even close actually. But you know you have to assume C nine is gonna get, play better. Um, and I do, and I still think. Energy has a good shot at taking it. Um, why? We screwed them over. Why, we start why believing. Is the, why, why is this the case? Why is this the case? Because I, I don't have any faith in either of the top laners. I think Blabber is insane. I also think Contracts is one of the only junglers that can actually get Blabber's number, though. Both former... Yeah. both Dude, Contracts was the original Blabber. Contracts was the OG Blabber. He, Blabber was behind Contracts for a bit there. Yeah. In terms of, like, underneath them, right? Yep. But, I mean, I just think Palafox is better than Eminos, you know? I think that's true. And I, I think, think that's true. Eminence yeah. is on a good team, guys. Like his yeah. peak okay, Eminence's peak is pretty decent. I will give him that. Yep. But Palafox has never played on such a team. Like if, if Palafox was put into C9 today and like given all the same time Eminence has, I promise you his average is higher. Yeah. For sure. I also think Palafox's average right now is higher than what Eminence is by a lot. And um the peaks that they both show, I mean I don't know. It's not like they're that different, right? I feel like Palafox has some of the most insane carry games. Uh, the split. Uh, you guys have year. to rewatch that game. He was just moving around as a zero. He's just like, you guys are all worse. Like yeah. I was like, this man is smurfing his ass off. It's yeah. actually incredible. It was like a, it against was, yeah. Gory, the number yeah. one mid laner in my mind. In the yeah, league. yeah. Oh, yeah. so number two, I guess, behind JoJo. So yeah. Yeah. Well, you... Pal Fox saying F you to all of the all-pro votes and saying he should be number one right now. Because legitimately, Energy got hard snubbed for all that, uh, for the all-pro, I think. If we, if we look mm-hmm. at how, like, I don't know, maybe some of the... Because the players get votes. There's no way the players didn't realize that Energy must be good, right? Because, um, uh, so... I don't know, man. I, none of the players were... I, none of the pl- Because the players get votes, too, for all-pro. None of, there yeah. weren't that many player votes for in the top three. Amongst energy. the player votes, none of the energy players were on there. Yeah, I know, and I, I think you know, hard snubbed. I feel like some of those pro players, they should, uh, they maybe should have considered voting for energy, scrimming against them and stuff. I don't know. I, anyways, um, this is just me coping for my placement of energy in the uh, all pro, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they beat my team, Golden Guardians. Um, anyways, energy gonna beat them, Cloud Nine. Um, yeah, maybe gets bumped down to the lower bracket. Maybe doesn't even move to. Go to go to 
No, they have to go to Worlds. They're guaranteed Worlds. Never mind. Yeah. yeah but, Cloud9 and Energy. So maybe they don't even worlds. care that much, honestly, because I mean, <laughs> you see like LNG as a second seed out there. You see <laughs> BLG as a third seed. You're yeah. just like, maybe, right? I mean, they could Rainbow be a fourth Gaming. seed. Like, dude, it's yeah. terrifying being dude, a fourth seed. Guard. T1 is, is probably going to be the third or fourth seed this year. And Gen G is probably, Gen G or KT is going to be a second seed. Like, bro, <laughs> it is rough oh, this year. God. Yeah. Anyways. That's that's Cloud9 versus uh versus versus Energy. Cloud9 obviously I think for a lot of people are the favorites, but we're mm-hmm. voting for Energy here because we do see that slim angle happening. It's not to be too slim. But let's move on to the next series, which by the way, we don't know who's actually going to be playing it, but we can surmise who's going to be playing it cuz it's going to be um the winner of EG versus TL playing against the winner versus Golden Guardians versus Dignitas, right? Um mm-hmm. So GGTL so, is what we predicted. Basically. GGTL is what we seven. both predicted. So this is basically, uh, I think, decider of who gets fourth seed, right? And then who moves on gets to continue. Fourth, gets the fourth place match, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed so is, to fight EU. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, wait. It's, no, uh, yeah, the winner of this match is guaranteed minimum fourth seed. No, third seed. Wait. There are six teams left, right? Yeah. And so if they both eliminate one of them. Oh, if they win. F- oh, okay. So the first series they win, they're guaranteed minimum top four. Oh. Yes. Okay. But, so we- but you don't get a world seed guarantee. Well, actually, we're probably going to smash you. So we yeah. do guarantee a world seed. Yep. <laughs> I'm assuming we go to worlds all four. I'm just going to say we beat EU. Screw it. All right. So this is actually fighting to just move on to the tournament. If we're both saying that GG versus TL are actually going to worlds uh, with energy and. Um, EG, wait, EG, Cloud9. TL, or no, TL, GGS, yeah, Energy Cloud9. Oh my god, oh, wait, it's wait, late tonight. Wait, EG handled in this? EG still in... EG loses a TL, we both say. Oh, TL, 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 okay. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's four. Yeah. Okay, it's late at night, folks. That's why we're doing this. We're tired, we're trying to get the podcast yeah, last it's second. it's like 12.30 a.m. It is not going well, but we're almost done. <laughs> I mean, it's been a pretty fun episode. Uh, but mm-hmm. we're almost done here, okay? I think that, honestly, I have to do it. We're going to go against each other the gray. That's fine. We both been rooting for the teams. I'm going Golden Guardians. This is going to 3 2 Team Liquid in this last match, but we don't even know if they're going to be in that match. Um, I mean, go we, ahead. Do we do know. Yeah, and, we're we're yeah. always going to be right with our predictions, which is exactly. why I'm going to predict Liquid's going to end up three one. I don't think I don't think between these two teams is a three two kind of scenario because I think it's just like they just smashed the other. They're on form and they don't don't collapse. Right, a three yep. two generally shows like they both have the right amount of like firepower. And I actually honestly think Liquid currently doesn't have the firepower on paper. But if Liquid starts winning, like they are terrifying uh, in terms of the early game. And we did just see you just get rolled over. Uh, so it won't be close if Liquid wins, and it will be probably not that close if GGS wins either, honestly. That's how I feel. Okay, interesting. You know, I have a weird crackbox theory. Remember last year when EG with Danny and JoJo, they were uh, kind of smurfing all of the summer split, right? And then they hit yep. the actual summer playoffs and they just started pooping the bed, right? And they yep. barely scraped by and they had to replace Danny. I feel like we're in that weird scenario for Golden Gardens where as soon as they hit playoffs, all of a sudden it just like somewhere went boom and they're going to barely scrape by. I, for some reason, feel like that for Golden Guardians. I don't know why. I hope it's not the case. But I could actually see it where, like, both TL... I mean, it's actually what EG and TL did last year, right? They barely scraped by in a five-game series to qualify for Worlds. Um, This won't be qualifying for Worlds. They will already be qualified, sort of, for Worlds. Uh, But the third seed is obviously more valuable. Um, I think Golden Guardians is going to take it in a very close, in a a very messy, ugly series, essentially, is what I'm saying. Okay, that's going fair. To and be... I want Golden Guardians to be our fourth seed so we can giga smash EU. So, you know, fair enough, fair enough. That's, you know that's what? just how I roll. Win-win. Liquid yeah. wins, America wins. You know what, TL, I'm giving them uh, all the all the games and prep they can on stage so that they can actually win Worlds. So I'm giving them the fourth seed <laughs> so they can beat EU, go into plans or whatever. the I don't even know what the format is and have the most games at, on the world. It's so freedom. hard to read the format. I think it's, it's more interesting than previous ones, but I can't explain it. I like look yeah. at them like, Cool. I can't wait to watch. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wait for someone to explain it to me in a short, like, two-minute form video. Maybe we'll do the research and we'll explain it on the show. But honestly, like, up until, like, the two weeks before Worlds, I'm just going to be like, yep. yep, that's a format, all right. Well, that is a format. That is, um, yeah, that's uh, that's all the games we have uh, for this weekend. Um, and then, yeah, we are looking closer and closer to those Worlds. Uh, or looking around the world, right? Um, 
other regions are starting playoffs. LPL's actually finished. They're done. They just have yeah, what we know all the we know all of them, right? Um, we know all, all the world represents. Now. Yep. Uh, and so it's, it's terrifying. JDG is going on the first. Fourth place team. Yeah, JDG's first, LNG second, uh, BLG's third, and uh, Weibo Gaming is fourth seed. Kind of a Cinderella story. Um, yeah, the Shy is returning to Worlds. Um, cool Zabu fact, the, world. the yeah. same four mid laners from last year in LPL are the same four mid laners this year. Yep. Top, yep. Is so it's just on different teams. Knight is the first seed. Uh, it's not Yagao. It's actually Scout is the second seed. Yep. Yagao is the third seed, and Shao is the fourth seed. Like you look at that, and you're yep. just like, what the f- <laughs> "How is that okay?" They like, all you got teams. Shao who triple MSI winner who has slain swapped and everything. Yep. Like the king of spring, he's the fourth seed. I'm like, okay, okay. Yep, um, he's the fourth. And he's seed. got the Shai as his top winner as the fourth seed. <laughs> like, yep. Excuse me. And uh, yes, the first seed in NA will definitely beat the fourth seed of some other region of some what lower level region. Yeah, the shy more like the shit. Right? Oh, wait, I do believe it. This year it is possible for us to be an LCK team if we get our first seed match up with the LCK. I think LCK doesn't look strong. I, I, I think if D plus goes, I'm just like these guys are jokes. Like I cannot I, believe yeah. a team with Showmaker can looks this bad. But we'll we'll talk I, more yeah. pre worlds. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about pre-worlds. I, I, I tend to agree with the level we were shown, but it's just something about Asian pro players. They match up against an, a, an NA team, and it's just like, I, we're just invincible. Like, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. I, I want a tournament someday where NA goes, right? And we don't know who our opponents are. You don't get to see them. They're, like, in another booth. Yeah. You don't name plates off. You don't know the <laughs> matchups. And then we just, like, after all the matches are played correctly... Then they show who you beat. Oh my god! Because I think NA just mind blocks so hard sometimes. And this Wait. is a little cope, but it's a real thing in sports, right? Like we see yep. it with BLG and the JDG. BLG is not 07 against JDG in terms of skill, but it happens. People for the longest time, like double look like absolute ass against Uzi, even though I think Uzi was definitely better, but not this much better. Yeah. It's like Doublelift would definitely make so many unforced errors and uncharacteristic mistakes. Yeah, like it wasn't real Doublelift playing. It was like baby lift. So yeah, anyways. baby lift. Yeah, there we go. We could talk about this forever, but I'm excited. Um, I'm glad that L- LPL is done. Go watch LCK. It's really, it's getting really good. I think the bottom teams weren't great in playoffs, but we get to see if T1 can make the miracle run. It's going which to is be. Weird to say. Definitely. I mean, this year in general is just history made. I think every year when we get closer to Worlds, we just get more and more history being made, right? Like mm-hmm. last year with the DRX Miracle Run, even before that with all the things in LCS with the Evil Geniuses. This year, right, we have so many resurgences of NA mids. Um, TSM had their last series ever in NA. Like there's just a lot of history being made uh, in League of Legends across the world. And it is exciting. It is both terrible for many players' careers and amazing for some other players' careers. Um, yeah. Do you guys have anything else? Did you want to talk about yeah. anything in the meta? Any other uh, stories around the world? Um, anything oh, in League of Legends? Um, I don't know if these will go to live, but one thing. I think the Fury was con- confirmed by a rider to be at Worlds, which is weird to me. Ooh, that shouldn't be allowed. I, like, I saw someone say it on Twitter, but I think <clears> maybe he was joking. Maybe he's being sarcastic because it makes no sense. It has no pro play somewhere. So that's mm-hmm. odd. I, yeah. I don't even know how broken it is because I haven't gotten to play it much. Mm-hmm. It was fun in Aram. It was a funny character. Uh, yep. And then a lot of lethality items are getting buffs. Uh, Axiom Mark, um, Prowler's Claw, and what's the third one called? Um, oh, uh, the, 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 I know what you're talking about. The shield, it's the shield one, right? Spell shield Edge one? Knight, maybe? I don't maybe? know. It was one of them, and one then they're nerfing Dustblade. So yeah. those things in the meta, I think, will shake up a little bit uh, in terms of optionality. Yeah. But a lot of those characters weren't being played that much. I just want to see a little bit more lethality abuse, because I thought lethality items were already kind of broken with Dustplay. So nerf and Dustplay, I get it. But the other lethality items might have some weird niche builds. Uh, and then that's it. That's all I have from... Oh, Umbral Glaive is getting buffed. Axiom Serpent's oh, probably And then Umbral Kaisa Glaive. got nerfed as well, which, yeah. I mean, she'll still get played, but she won't be... Maybe yeah. as OP. I don't this know. AP Kaisa is so overplayed right now, and I love yeah. AP. I love Kaisa, but I just think it's not great for viewers. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just because it's one of those champions that doesn't do anything until it does everything, right? Um, mm-hmm. So it's like you're just... Because you're cr- like 2,000 units away on a yep. spammable spell. No other character has that shit. Yeah, it's like uh, Nidalee, Nidalee, old Nidalee on absolute steroids who also turns into a tanky assassin <laughs> that flies mm-hmm. on you. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing I'm actually least excited about about the Worlds patch, like we saw a 13.16 patch review is what Kevin's talking about. I don't like that they're buffing, what, Lucian, Lulu, Caitlyn, Wukong, Silas, Akali, literally, Melio, like, that was just what the meta was for the majority of League of Legends in the past few years, right? Like, aren't, aren't the shows the same champions we always see? If Zekka only just recently... makes it to world, he's like, ah, another one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Like, a bunch of junglers, right? Like, I mean... Just a bunch of champions, you know, come back into the rotation. If Wukong is good enough to come back, isn't he just one of the most overpicked junglers ever? Um, you're also nerfing Sejuani too around him. Uh, so, anyways, that's that's the that's the next upcoming patches. Um, the one thing I am interested in um, pro play uh, meta at least for LCS is uh, just the departure of not picking Aatrox like all the time. Um, I'm confused at how little Aatrox we actually saw, because I think the champion is super busted. Um, agreed, but we agreed, agreed. really don't see him being played. Um, I, don't, I don't even remember. If, did he get banned a lot? But that's my only like one. Maybe just, a like, few bans against Revenge or something yeah. like that. But like he's like the only one I notably remember playing it. Like There were no Aatrox games this entire weekend. Yeah. I think. No, I'm pretty sure Revenge picked it this weekend. What? Did he? Maybe. Maybe I'm missing it. I'm just looking Am at I all the... Ones? the... I might be hallucinating. <laughs> I'm... Oh, he did. He did. I'm, I'm okay. sorry. He picked it. Uh, they traded, yeah. Aatrox Renekton. Never mind. You're oh, not okay, crazy. Okay, okay. Yeah, I forgot yeah, about that. Okay. Um, okay, I mean, that's fair. I still think, like, why is Summit not playing Aatrox? Isn't he a monster on that champion? I've seen him do some illegal stuff. At least, at stuff. least when he was on C9, but yeah. I've never seen him play it like that, like, super effectively so... in TL, or maybe at all. Same with Someday. I feel like Someday is an insane Aatrox player. Like, he would always pick him and Nar. Like, these are the kind of same, like, type of players. Solo, Summit. Here's the deal. Zayus picks it in, L- <laughs> in LCK playoffs this week. Yeah. And you will definitely see it from the Korean tops in NA. Probably, I'm yeah. just saying. After all, oh, we, uh, we need to mention this before I uh, meta stuff. Quid building GA third. On the ADC or whatever he played, was it Tristana? What was it, Kaiser? Whatever he played, him as one of the threads building GA third when they were losing. <laughs> actually, I, I think okay, I'm pretty sure somebody on the broadcast or some commenter has mentioned this. It triggered me so much. I was like, you cannot be a real human and pick GA third while you're losing. Like, what what is your plan here? <laughs> Just trying to lose for a hundred percent. You have yeah. no damage. You're a carry. Like these people, they're so good mechanically. I have no brain. And I, we will keep calling them out because one, it's low hanging fruit. Um, sure. it's, it's funny <laughs> and we can like, but it's truly a thing. I think that when you have too many mechanics, you just, you crutch too, too much hard on your mechanics and you don't learn how yep. items work. Yeah. You don't learn game theory, stuff like that for sure. I mean, double lift has said no, no, the game like, no theory way. is do, does Faker build it? Yeah. Does Zeus build it? Does Carrier build it? No. Okay. Then I don't build it. I mean, there was literally a quote from one of the players. I think it was Tenacity. Uh, he talked about it after he retired that on 100 Thieves, they were not allowed to play a champion unless someone in an Asian region had played it before. And it was yep. after, it was after, it like, me. yeah, when uh, Buzio played first game of Zero, right? Then they were just like, nope, nope, meta only, meta only. We cannot do that. Yeah, that's just really stupid. Uh, I mean,. Some players just don't have the talent, right? I think Double just said many times on his co-stream back before he w- was in pro play that like he didn't really have any idea of builds and what was best, right? He did a lot of copying, he did a lot of people telling him what to do, and then reasoning from that to like kind of figure it out. But you know, I I, I think like if you just look at Quid's build, he went Static Shiv, Navori, Guardian's Angel. No one's telling him to build that. He doesn't know what to build. Like, that's just a zero damage build, brother. Like, just the Static Shiv into Navori build, I think, in general, for Tristana. It does no damage, bro. Like, you're just pushing and shoving a little bit faster, but Tristana already one-shots the wave. Anyways... I think it's an okay core, because you can shove with it. It gives you the Navori, which gives you the attack speed on your Q. Like, there are a lot of good reasons for it, because shove is important in pro play. But you cannot go defensive if you start those two ends. You're already yeah. building sort of utility, right? So you need to commit to 
either an LDR, you could go maybe a tax, but you could go bloodthirst if you really wanted to. Although I, I kind of think bloodthirst is a little cap unless you have a lot of frontliners who can keep you above 50, then yeah. you get 40 AD, right? Like you're yeah. almost level 18 by then. So there are a lot of choices. It's not GA. Yeah. GA is when you're soft hinting. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, I would even say it's hard uh, <laughs> I I actually think the static shiv is not worth it at all. Because have you ever played Kraken Slayer Tristana and then compared it to static shiv Tristana? Oh, yeah, like, sorry, I forgot Kraken, yeah. Dude, there's, there's a like, huge difference. There is a in, huge damage difference. But in pro play, sometimes that poke you're getting off and the wave push so you can be at hero first like makes all the difference. That's the thing. I agree, Kraken's just better, right? Yeah. But in pro play, you're not necessarily just getting that many autos off, especially if you're quit and you're not good I'm, at positioning. <laughs> I'm very aware of the shove potential, but I think like when you actually look at how players, how Tristana players shove the wave, they are saving at most a second or two which i admit yes can make a big difference in league of legends but is it worth doing such little damage compared to kraken slayer i do not think the trade-off exists i think that you already shove the wave so fast as kraken slayer tristana you don't need static shiv and your damage trade-off for slightly slower wave clear is like exponentially higher it's just dramatically higher so that's my opinion on it um obviously a pro player probably knows better probably not actually that's not true they just have some reason they all agreed to start doing this across the world so who knows right maybe one guy decided to do it and every other pro Mm -hmm. decided that's the way to do it and nobody looked into why honestly that sounds ridiculous what i just said but that is the thing that happens with pro play and has been proven to happen many times in the past with pro players um that's it going to be it on the meta talk. Do we have any last thoughts before we end this podcast for tonight? Yeah, My last thought was uh, when my friend uh, re replay TFT mm. on Twitch won worlds as the first NA rep to win worlds. Ooh. He built items that like guard breaker, which no one was building or at least most people weren't building and thought it was just mid tier. Yep. A lot of people are slaves to, uh, especially in TFT because you have a lot of aggregation stats that tell you like average placement of this item or this build or this augment, whatever. Right. Yep. And a lot of people are just slaves to that. Uh, and he just built what he thought was strong, and he won Worlds by a large margin. So literally every other pro player could say something is good, and I still don't necessarily believe it. If I just look at it objectively, I'm just like, this doesn't make sense. Yep. Um, yep. So that's all I got to say. Hell yeah. You use your brain. I preach it. You know, fair enough. There's so many times where I felt like a player should have been a little shroud, and it's just starting to catch on, even though the items have been broken for about – a long ass time. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm worried it's gonna catch on by the time they've nerfed it, and then the, they just start building when it's stupid. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, I'm triggered. I wonder if they're gonna nerf Evan Shroud or Abyssal Mask because I think those are the two most broken items in the game. I, I but feel we'll like see. Mask might get nerfed just because people spam it so much more because it's such an obvious pick. It's like up yeah. to 105 MR or some shit on 2300 gold yeah, with 60 base MR and damage amp. I'm like looking at that item. I'm like, brother, yep. you don't need to know math to know this is a good item. And people yep. used to build it with that when it was bad, not bad, not as good. So like people have all the excuses to build it now. Yep. Yep. Definitely, definitely agree. Um, items, people, pro players, haha, so funny. Uh, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, I'm still excited for the, this next coming weeks. Um, I think we're going to get LC, LEC playoffs, this or not LEC, LEC season finale this weekend, I think, is happening. No, I think it's one more week. It was oh, a it's three one more week? week? Okay, it's only been two weeks, because yeah. they're just nonsense over there. Gotcha. It's a wild It's going to be hype, because everything, be, like, everything will matter on one we will weekend know. or whatever it is. Yep, I'm excited to know and lock in who are going to be our final uh, world representatives. And um, we're going to know this weekend who our possible world representatives are, actually. We just know won't we'll know the order. But we will be finding out this weekend who they are. And um, I'm excited to see who it is. It's definitely going to be Golden Guardians making that sweet lower bracket run with the buff, with the underdog juice to just win the entire title. It's going to be Golden Guardians versus Energy, five game series in the finals, and then they're both going to once again run the entire world championship and meet again in the world finals. And it will be Golden Guardians winning 3-2 against Energy in the world finals after they took down, you know, the Shy and Faker and all those guys, you know, those those losers. Anyways, <laughs> that's going to do it for us. He just snuck LCS that block. in here. I'm just sitting here like... <laughs> What words did this man just say? <laughs> uh, it's late, man. I don't even know. I'm just like, I almost didn't even know if I wanted to do this podcast because I was so confused and disappointed by Golden Guardians, bro. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm like 
three or four glasses of champagne in, and so hey. it was a fun podcast. <laughs> it uh, was. I was happy to drink because they're, they're like, "Oh, I can't drink this." Like, I'll drink this for you. And then four four glasses. I'm like, "Why did I do that?" <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. I mean, I, I think I was mostly coherent. Hell besides yeah. the, the typical team liquid ranting. Yep. Yep. Definitely agree. I d- I don't know if I actually ended the podcast yet, but um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, podcast is over. Try not to be too toxic. We'll see you on the next episode. You <laughs> oh just, yeah, you didn't end it. We can just you can just shove that in anywhere, Lee Dad. It's fine. Lee Dad, you can keep that in if you want. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't matter.